Hello folks, I'm Mark Stay. I'm an author and a screenwriter and in the run-up to the publication of my new book The Crow Folk, which is coming February 2021, I'm going to be posting regular updates here. There's stuff about the book and the story, but also behind the scenes stuff about the process of publication and particularly all the fun stuff that happens in the run up to that big publication date. And just recently I got my page proofs from my publisher. So I'm going to talk about what I do with those and how I review them for my publisher. So we're a little over three months away from the publication of The Crow Folk and the proof pages were sent to me as a PDF. This is how the printed book will look on the page. They used to come as a basically big wadge of paper but now for various reasons, economical, environmental, they're sent as a PDF. I did look at getting them printed locally um, but for a 352 page document it would have cost about 35 to 50 quid depending if I wanted it one-sided or, or two-sided. Now the proof pages are an author's last opportunity to really spot any errors and make any changes and not big changes either this is not an edit the edit is done this is not the design time to decide to move that pivotal scene in act two into act one no 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 what you're looking for are typos formatting errors clunky sentences and, and that's about it uh, I read them out loud why well when I was at Orion I worked for the Orion publishing group for many many years the audio director there Pandora White said she wished all authors would read their proof pages out loud and the reason is that by the time they came around to recording the audio book the proof pages had been done and sent off to the printers so if they ever spotted any errors it was too and they often did it was too late to do anything about it and I so you know that's why I read it out loud I, I know authors who use speech software to have their computer read it back to them which is a good way to spot typos and clunky sentences but you'll miss homonyms so you you, you know there are at least two I recall from this uh, book I uh, draft and draft and hole and hole and you'll miss formatting errors. You can't hear when the formatting is wrong, you know. So I had a question mark slip off the end of a line and, and end up at the beginning of the next line on, on this one. So I was, I was able to keep that, so to catch that. So I read out loud. I make the words as big as possible on the screen because I'm one of those people who tends to speed read and skip ahead. And that's how you miss stuff. That's how you miss uh, the, the, the little tiny details. And you can't make that mistake when the words are so huge. When I read I do so in a soft voice and I try not to make it too dynamic or dramatic. You know this process can take as long as a week and I need to save my voice. Uh, and there's a fine line between a soft voice and monosyllabic so, so here's a little example. Charlotte Southhill's hair was cotton white, her face pale, lipstick blood red. She was smoking a clay pipe and reading an unmarked black book. I mark up the PDF as I go. I read for about an hour at a time and then I usually take a break, do a little bit of housework or something just to get you know the circulation going again. I generally find I can only read in the mornings. I'm just too drowsy in the afternoon and I miss stuff. At the end of each session I go back to my original document, uh, which is a Scrivener document. You may use Word or, or similar. And I go and make those changes, all those markups that I've made, I go and make them in my original document. And I did that for the edit and the copy edit. Any changes go back into a master document so that I have a master doc with all the updated changes. You'd be amazed how few authors do this. And that's not unreasonable. Why should I do this? The, the publisher is making those changes and putting it out there. Well, but at some point in the future, you may need that document. You may part company with your publisher. You know, authors get the rights back to their books and I may want to self-publish it in 20, 30 years time or whatever. And the last thing you want to do is have to go through this process all over again. And also, you, you know, you can't just ask the publisher for those files. They'll charge you for them. They spent money creating them and they will charge you. Sometimes it's hundreds of pounds. And if you've got a whole series, that can really, really add up. So, you know, create an archive, back it up get into the habit of creating archiving your own. So that's it, that's reading page proofs. Uh, coming up, I'm going to be talking about research into the magic of the crow folk, more behind the scenes publishing stuff. So please subscribe so you don't miss out. Any questions, pop them below and I'll do my best to get you answers. See you next time.